in this part after we washed it we are wet sanding with 600 grit we work in two by two sections after you finish the whole boat with 600 grit we switch off to a thousand grit and then we do the same thing with 3000. We are using a six inch short throw DA polisher slash sander. We are using the Bauer brand just from Harbor Freight. I wouldn't recommend using anything expensive because it is wet sanding and you are gonna get water in it and eventually over time it is gonna stop working. Definitely with it being Harbor Freight. So I wouldn't recommend spending three, $400 or more on a polisher. As you can see on the left side of the blue where Barry is standing to the left sanding, somebody has previously wet sanded this and I'm thinking that they went with like 400 grit because they went way too far in to where it actually changed the blue that's there. So since this boat has been worked on before, we did use caution. We didn't go too crazy on it just because I didn't want to do any further damage. Now on this back, we are wet sanding again, 600, 1,000, 3,000. On that bottom right above the white deck, we did have to hand sand it just because this polisher did not fit in that area very well. And behind that bar right there, we did hand sand under there as well. Now we usually do tape off the rub rail, but since it wasn't really in the way, it was more of a uh, plated chrome piece it, we didn't worry about it. People have asked where we get our sandpaper from. I would recommend calling a body shop supplier in your area to see if they sell any sandpaper. Now, where we're from in Gastonia, North Carolina, we go to the body shop down here, the supplier, and the uh, sandpaper is called Sunmite. You do wanna make sure that your uh, sandpaper does not have any holes in it, because if it does, the interface pad on your sander polisher will put scratches in it. Now when wet sanding, make sure you do rinse your sandpaper in the boat, the area you're working on every two sections because your sandpaper will build up with the residue from the gel coat. And the Sun Mite sandpaper we buy is also on Amazon. Now that we're done wet sanding back here, we are gonna start compounding with Stark Level R. You can buy a gallon for $169 or the 32 ounce for $59 on their website. We are using a DeWalt rotary with a 3M real wool pad. Do not cheap out on the pad. We start at 1000 RPMs. Once you work all the compound in, turn it up to 1800 RPMs until the clarity has returned. There shouldn't be any residue or anything left to wipe. Now you do want to make sure definitely if you're a woman, you keep your hair tied up or you're going to have a really fucking bad day. Same thing with wet sanding, make sure you work in two by two sections. Now when you wet sand properly, this stuff level R will go a long way. You do not want to use too much. It will sling everywhere and it will clog your pad up. And don't use too little. I dotted it around in sections and then I spread it out. Mm -hmm. 
I must repeat, always wet sand if there's any oxidation. I can't stress this enough. If you do not wet sand, the oxidation will bleed back through. A lot of people say when wanting a quote, my boat needs a really good wax. When clearly there's oxidation, do not do it. Explain to them what it needs. If they don't want to do it, if they don't want to pay, serve a customer who will and know your worth. A lot of people think that a buffer automatically will make their boat look brand new with wax just because it's a buffer, it's a machine. No, it won't. It'll make it look a tad better, if any, while smearing wax and oxidation around. Wax or marine sealant can be applied by hand because it is used to only protect the boat after restoring it, not to restore it. Same with cars, wax is to only protect the clear coat not repair scratches or to make dead clear coat come alive. Now we're wrapping up this side with compound. After all the compounding is done, we always wash it before polishing it to get rid of all the dust off the hole. We use Stark Elevate. I recommend using a purple Lake Country foam wool pad or a good regular polishing pad will work as well. This step will get rid of all the holograms and light scratches left behind from level R. Long throw polishers are better for swirl marks and the short throw is better for micro scratches. I did record us applying Stark Hyper Hold Polymer Sealant with Colonite Wax on top, but my phone did cut off. Now we're putting all the screws back in and we're done. I add Colonite Wax on top of the sealant for extra gloss. Always reapply every four to six months. And this is a 1987 Bayliner. Please like and subscribe for more video updates. Thank you for watching.